Today we're going to be cutting a piece of moissanite. This is dichroic moissanite, so on one axis of the crystal it's blue, on the other axis it's kind of yellow or maybe even green a little bit. So when I cut this, these colors are going to mix and probably be incredible. A couple notes about moissanite. This is a very hard stone, but it is going to be a challenge to cut because of how hard it is. So um, we'll see. And putting numbers on it might be tricky too because it is the same material that I used to put numbers on. So we will see how this goes, but I can't wait to get it on there. Um, moissanite has a really high um, refractive index, which means it bends the light a lot. Uh, so this die should be pretty crazy across the board. We'll see if we can actually get it cut though, because it's going to be a challenge. break out a new 100 grit disc for this. Um, I go through one of these about every 50 stones or something and I've already gone through one on this to give you an idea of how slow this is going. Um, yeah, I didn't anticipate how much labor would be involved in this die, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end because the refractive index and the luster and the dichroic nature of this I think is going to be mind-blowing. So, this will be loud because new discs are always a bit rough. This die took 10 times longer than usual to rough grind, but I had to see what light bending wonder would emerge, so I forged on. It's kind of a key thing that I do differently than other gem cutters, probably. This machine is designed to cut gemstones. That's, you know, symmetric things that go in rings or pendants or things like that. Um, and I'm not. I'm trying to create a geometric shape with it. The way we control rotation of the stone is with this wheel. So this is an 80 tooth wheel which divides out by five. 16 teeth is a fifth, which is how I cut, you know, the major faces of a D20 because it's symmetric around the circle divided by five, or five-fold symmetry. But when I go to do these little tiny facets on the corners, I need to go in between these teeth. Like 80 teeth is not enough for me to get to the exact plane that I need to be to. So I use the cheater intentionally, which is pretty different than other gemstone cutters. All right, so here's the cheater, and this is in degrees. And what this does is it turns a little screw here, which offsets the index wheel by just a smidge. Um, the f facets I'm about to cut have to be off by over a degree. That's almost halfway between teeth on the index wheel. So this is like something that's very tedious about cutting these dice, but pretty cool. It's time to do 8,000 grit and I'm excited because this is when the stone will become clear and we'll get a glimpse inside and see how the colors mix. This cut pattern was intended for the blue dendritic opal die, it did not work out in that case, and I've wanted to come back to it ever since. Alright, so let's talk about this thing. It's about halfway done. You can definitely see the dichroic nature of it. I'll put light behind it. Kind of see this axis here kind of has a yellow, or it kind of turns brown, which is a little bit cool. Then over here it gets kind of blue. I kind of like how it's mixing. You can see some needles in there. I'll try and get you a better shot of those in a second. 
So they really show up in certain lights, and what's crazy is like, there's only like four or five in there, but the light from them gets bent all the way through this stone, and you see it like crazy. Moissanite has a very high uh, refractive index, so it bends light a lot when it goes in, and actually makes this thing sort of seem not very sparkly right now. I think because all these facets are sort of pointing down, it means the light is getting just pushed down through this stone. I think when we do the other side, it's going to get pretty wild. Saint Smart noticed I was using a 3018 mil. They asked if they could send over a 3030 Prover Max in exchange for a shout out. I agreed because I was so impressed with the 3018. The packaging is very nice. It's compact but very secure and assembly is a breeze. Just a few bolts and plugs and you're done. Check out the link in the description and use code Heathen Rockworks to get $50 off your order and a free apron. I put my files for the drag knife holder online, so if you have access to a 3D printer, you can make this super accurate plotter yourself. They're available for this 3030 and for the 3018. Link in the description. With this thing being so capable, I had to try it for its intended purpose. It's more than capable of cutting stabilized wood and micarta, and others have even cut aluminum with it. In no time at all, I was able to machine custom my carved scales for my pocket knife. As a home DIYer with little space, I highly recommend the 3030 Prover, and I think you should check it out. When I started making dice, I wanted to make something I was proud of. Something that anybody could look at and see the quality. But the more I make, the more I hone my process, the less it feels like I'm creating something, and the more it feels like I'm revealing the potential of the stone. Carving, shaping, polishing what is already there. This stone was already amazing before, but with some time and effort, it can take your breath away.